In this video, we'll be covering the Ibotson Chan earnings model, or we just call it the Ibotson Chan model. So it's a type of macroeconomic model that can be used to calculate the equity risk premium for a equity market. In the Ibotson Chan earnings model, the equity risk premium is equals to one plus the expected inflation rate. And then we multiply by one plus the expected growth in real EPS. And then we multiply by one plus the expected growth in the PE ratio of the index. And then we'll minus one. So this will give us the overall growth in the index price. And then we add in the yield or the expected income okay, from the entire index. And then we minus the risk-free rate. We usually use a long-term government yield to denote the risk-free rate. Now, uh, to get the understanding of how this model came about, we will link this to the Gordon Growth model. So under Gordon Growth model, the equity risk premium is equals to the forecast or the forward dividend yield of the entire index for the year ahead over the current market value of the entire index and then we'll plus the consensus long-term earnings growth rate of the index minus uh, current long-term government bond yield. Now to expand based on this, the dividend yield or the forward dividend yield is equivalent to the expected income in the Ibotson Chan model and the growth rate here is the equivalent to this entire component. To show that this G is equals to this, okay, we'll just do a bit of uh, improvisation. So this growth rate here, okay, I'll expand this into the price, okay, or the index price today over the index price in the previous period, which is last year, minus one. So this will give us the overall growth in the index price over that year. Now, if I further expand this, okay, we can then split this into two fractions. Now in this case, uh, I would like to calculate the PE ratio for this particular year. So I'll divide by the earnings, the EPS of the whole market, okay, for the year, T. Now of course, uh, to balance it out, I will need to have an, another E, the earnings per share, okay, for that year, T. And then uh, for the second fraction here, we'll have E, to so sub T minus 1. This is the earnings, the EPS for last year or last period. So again, to balance out, we'll need to have another EPS for T minus 1. Right, so when we write ratios in this form, okay, so I will now, for these two particular fractions, I will express it as the PE ratio for period T over the PE ratio for period T minus 1. And then multiply by the EPS for period T over the EPS over period T minus 1. Now, of course, uh, bear in mind that this is in nominal terms. Now, when we write ratio in this form, when we calculate the ratio of a variable over the previous period, okay, we can usually express this as 1 plus the change, okay, the change in the PE ratio, or you can say the growth in the PE ratio, okay, and this is for the first fraction, okay, and then for the second one, this is 1 plus the change, okay, uh, in earnings. Now, of course, this is in nominal terms. So if I break it further, so this will be 1 plus the change in the PE ratio in percentage terms multiplied by 1 plus the change in uh, the earnings. But of course, uh, I'll split it into a real, this real earnings and then multiply by 1 plus the change in inflation rate. Okay, so that's how we link this back to these three terms. We have the inflation rate, we have the growth in the real EPS and we have the growth in the PE ratio. Okay, so these entire three items, of course, uh, don't forget, we have to we have the minus one here. So let's include the minus one, minus one, minus one, and minus one. Okay, so we have this minus one to finish up the linking between G, the growth rate, to these three components. So hopefully you see the linkage between the equity risk premium using the Ibotson Chen model and also the Gordon Groves model. Now let's look at an example when analyst has compiled the following data for calculating the US equity risk premium. The expected inflation is 3% per annum. The expected growth rate in real EPS is 2.6%. 
The US equity market PE ratio is viewed as being overvalued by 1.5%. The expected income is 2.8% and the risk free rate of return is 2.2%. So we'll use the Ibotson Chen model to compute the US equity risk premium. So again, the equity risk premium using the Ibotson Chen model will be based on 1 plus the expected inflation multiplied by 1 plus the expected growth in uh, real EPS and then multiply by 1 plus the expected growth in the PE ratio then we minus 1 then we add in the expected income from the for the index and then we minus the risk free rate so here the inflation rate given is uh, 3 percent so that's uh, 1 plus 0 0.03 and then the growth in the real EPS is 2.6 percent now, the trick here is that the US equity market PE ratio is viewed as being overvalued. Okay, we expect the PE ratio to contract by 1.5%. So in this case, this would be 1 minus 0 0.015 because we expect the PE ratio to drop or to decline. Then we minus 1 and then we add in the expected income of 2.8% minus the risk fee rate of 2.2%. So if you calculate for this component, for the growth component, this will be equals to 0 0.0409 and then we add in the income minus the risk free rate so this will be equals to 4.69 percent so this will be the equity risk premium for the u.s market based on the ibotson chance model